Hi, this is for uh, a lab where if you um, happen to have springs, just any kind of spring like this, uh, it's a real nice way of, of getting students to understand um, the idea of, of like elastic forces um, as well as periodic motion, okay? a motion that, that repeats itself over and over in a set amount of time. So for example, with something like a spring, one thing that we can do very quickly and easily, one property of it, is the fact that if you hang different amounts of weight on it, of course it'll stretch a different distance. Okay, so a small amount of weight that I put on here will stretch the spring, and that's one thing that you could actually measure um, for a particular kind of uh, a particular amount of mass or weight that you put on here. What's the amount of stretch that you have uh, with the spring? Um, and if you ha happen to have your kids do any kind of graphing of this, um, they can make graphs and they can see that it's more or less going to be a, a straight line. Um, some springs are very loose. Um, others are, are tight. A loose spring, if this is mass and this is the amount of stretch that you have, a shallow line would be a loose spring and a steep line would be a tight spring. Now what's interesting about that too is, is the fact that if you don't have springs, we can have that be replaced by just a plain old rubber band, okay, anything elastic like that. So smaller weights will stretch it a certain amount, and heavier weights of course will stretch it farther. Okay, we can measure that amount of stretch. It should behave a lot like a spring, so it, you know, either rubber band or, or spring will do fine. So that's one type of, of graph, one type of result that you can get. And you can have students do this before you talk about springs or rubber bands or e elastic type things. Um, let them discover it. Let them start finding out and thinking like a scientist, um, thinking about different kinds of behaviors and characteristics for whether it's a spring or rubber band or anything else. Um, but a second thing you can do with these, and you can actually make a connection between springs and rubber bands along with something like a, a pendulum. Uh, a pendulum is the other way that we can actually keep time and make clocks out of them. It just repeats itself over and over, swinging back and forth, and you can, you can actually time it um, and make a clock out of it if you wanted to. Uh, a good challenge for a student would be um, how long do you have to make the string in order for it to um, to swing back and forth in just one second, actually make a real clock. It, it's about 25 centimeters, it turns out. But with, with a, a spring, this could also be a, a timing device. You can make a clock out of it. Uh, a lightweight when you put it on a spring and either just stretch it or compress it a little bit and get it bouncing. Notice how a light mass makes it bounce pretty quickly. Okay, we call that a short period, a short amount of time um, to bounce up and down. Whereas a, a much heavier weight, a bigger mass, will stretch it out quite a bit farther. And if you bounce this, it's very noticeably much slower. Okay, it takes a longer time to bounce up and down, a longer period of time. And again, if, if you don't have springs, if you do have rubber bands instead, it would be the same kind of thing. You can get um, similar type results. Uh, a small mass, a small weight, okay, bounces pretty quickly. Okay, Newton's law says it for the same force, it, it, um, a small mass has a bigger acceleration. It's going to move faster. Versus a bigger weight on the rubber band, stretches it farther, and bounces much more slowly. Okay, it takes a longer amount of time uh, to bounce up and down. Okay, so you can kind of compare and contrast rubber bands and springs and, and a pendulum as far as how they keep time. We can measure that if you have any kind of stopwatch, maybe on, on a cell phone or just a plain old stopwatch. Um, but again, with very simple materials, just rubber bands, springs, uh, string, for if you want to make a pendulum, um, you can do all this sort of thing. And keep in mind, um, if, you, if you have your students make graphs, uh, especially with real measurements, real data, 
um, if this is the time or period to bounce, and this is the amount of mass or weight that you have on it, um, these actually turn out to be more like a square root graph. It's, it's actually a curve rather than a straight line. These are very nice to show students it's not always a straight line. Um, it's something where they can make the measurements and see if they get pretty close to, to the real thing um, and actually try to discover what the, the properties of bouncing rubber bands or springs are. Um, all of this can be done before you actually talk about it and do anything with it in class. Let your students be the scientists and you can do it with very simple materials. So I hope this helps. Um, There'll be a, a company lesson plans for both pendulums and for the, the springs or rubber bands that oscillate. And I uh, hope you have fun with it.